Lead Architect wants to break our monolith into 47 microservices in six months. Is this insane? Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. And yes, this does sound insane on the surface. I'm going through this pretty popular Reddit thread because of course, context matters and there might be more to this than you think. The link's in the description so you can read the entire post, but the justification for this seemingly insane idea is monoliths don't scale. We need team autonomy, something about how service mesh and event bus will make us future-proof, and that we're digging deeper debt every day we wait. So here's a few points of this post. It's an eight-year-old Python monolith, 200,000 lines of code, 25 developers. It handles 50,000 requests a day. Deployment takes about eight minutes, and it rarely crashes. Now, everybody's getting hung up on the 50,000 requests per day, as if, like, really, that's it? but that's the wrong way to look at it. I'll explain why, but first I'd like to thank Current for sponsoring this video. Current's event native data platform that feeds real time business critical data with historical context and fine grained streams from origination to destination, enhancing data analytics and AI outcomes. For more on Current, check out the link in the description. So a lot of people might get hung up on the 50,000 requests per day thinking that's not really a lot to be doing all of this. So if we take 50,000 requests per day, it's just over maybe 2,000 requests per hour. Uh, 35 requests per minute, and just over a half a request a second. That seems kind of low, kind of insane to be doing all this work of splitting this monolith to microservices. The one thing people really aren't thinking, though, is that this just doesn't easily average over a 24-hour day. A lot of business systems, as the example, more have load uh, during actual business hours, for example. Maybe just some internal back office system where, yeah, load actually is zero, uh, overnight or people aren't working. And this could be very different. This might actually only be a one hour window. It wasn't really explained what it is. So even if you were to take it over 12 hours, for example, that only just ends up just over one request per second. What I'm trying to get at here is request per second. Yes, it's some data point, but it's not the be all end all. What's the value of each request to the end user? What's the business value? What's the outcome of it? If it's something to do monetarily, I have no idea. It could be valued as a lot. 50,000 requests, are they all coming in within a 15 minute window, a one minute window, 24 hours? I don't know. I can't judge based off the number of requests. Now, from a developer's perspective, some of the comments are, well, 50,000 requests, that you don't need the extra complexity of moving to something like microservices. I totally understand that. But one perspective is not somebody else's perspective within that organization. Your view of something isn't necessarily likely the view of someone else that has a different context. Yes, as a developer, you have deep knowledge about how the application is built, how it runs, everything related to it. Absolutely. But what always ceases to amaze me is not thinking about somebody else has a totally different vantage point in information that you don't have that is also driving their understanding. It's that Venn diagram of like, you're kind of meeting somewhere in the middle, but there's a whole subset of information that they don't know. And there's a whole subs a subset of information that you don't know. Which brings me back to the post of monoliths don't scale, we need team autonomy. When you think about scale, you're thinking about requests per second, which everybody was getting hung up on. But I don't think that's the way this was put at all because they're immediately saying we need team autonomy. We're not talking about scale of requests per second. We're talking about scale of our developers, our teams being able to push changes and capabilities, enhance our system or fix bugs. That's the scale I think they're talking about. So maybe the actual underlying issues that they're having or perceived to have is organizational scale. So they want that independent deployability of business capabilities because maybe they're lacking that. Um, or it's basically very different release cadences between those things. You have some specific core functionality. That's what you want to iterate on. That's what you want to be releasing quicker. Maybe they can't do that. Or there's just different constraints. Organizational structure of these teams. Are there different teams? Or is it just 25 developers? Again, I get this feeling here. This was more organizational scale in a way of doing that with splitting up this monolith. Now you might be thinking, no, this is completely insane. You're just trying to justify this in some weird way. I am trying to give some perspective about maybe things that you don't know, but I actually do agree that this is insane for this reason. Because of the 47 services in six months with 25 developers, you're just gonna randomly split this thing apart that easily in six months. Where's the 47 services? That's complete nonsense, likely, because service boundaries just don't end up that small, generally. I understand microservices, they add complexity. They don't remove it. The distributed nature of everything that you're going to be adding to this in terms of communication, 
troubleshooting, hotel, all these other things. It said like an event bus or event mesh. You're adding a lot of infrastructure. You're adding a lot of moving parts. Yes, this is absolutely insane. For a system that's stable and currently deploys in eight minutes, just breaking it apart like a grenade, not the greatest idea, probably. I can understand if you want to carve off a section that will give you the benefit of that autonomy, of being able to deploy it and change the cadence of that release for it. Absolutely makes sense to just launch it with a grenade and blow the whole thing up. That's kind of crazy. If you are talking about scale, though, in the sense of just request per second and being able to process more work, one way of doing this is just moving work asynchronously within your monolith. I'll have a link to a description of the, or in the description of the video at the end that just talks about scaling a monolith, but the brief overview of it is just moving work asynchronously. So you have a call, say it's an HP API, we can just place that message on a queue if we're assuming our client doesn't need the actual response right away of the work that's being performed. And we can have a worker that is the exact same code base. It is a monolith. It could be a different container, executable running. It's just a different entry point into your app. Our HTTP API is kind of the web entry. Our worker is listening to our queue or our broker. It can process that work, process it, interact with our database. This is one good way of being able to scale. And this allows your monolith to scale. Your HTTP API, you can scale horizontally, even though I'm listing it vertically here, with multiple instances to serve more requests behind your load balancer, or whatever the case may be. And you can be doing that with the same thing with your worker, adding more instances to process more messages from your queue concurrently. This is often called the competing consumers pattern. Your monolith can scale. Now I have to highlight some comments that are really great because they're really in line with what I'm trying to explain is that context matters. Specifically, these two are like unbelievably good. What is missing here is the business proposition. Absolutely, what's the value for making this change? I assume there's one, I don't really know though. So I love this though. The business proposition could absolutely exist and it's not covered here. A not so secret fact is that AWS, GCP, Azure sales give hilarious deals to companies willing to migrate. Maybe that's happening here too. Maybe it's not. The only thing I know is that I will probably never learn anything I need to in order to call this dumb through a Reddit post. So overall, my takeaway from this post is yes, it does seem absurd from a load perspective, but you cannot judge any of this simply by a request count. The request count in what window of time? What's the value of each request? Is it over 24 hours or is it within 15 minutes and each the value of each request is $1,000? Now there are likely pain points that the author isn't mentioning at all. There could be things like slow feature delivery, which is a problem. And it could be a problem because while the system is stable, it could be a hot coupled mess that's a disaster to change. And while it's stable, they don't really push features out for that reason. Now get in the comments because I know there's a ton of people that have been in similar situations where you're being pushed from the top down or somebody saying, we're splitting this into microservices and you have really no idea why, what was the outcome? I probably can guess a few of them. Get in the comments and let me know. Thanks to everybody that supports my channel. I really do appreciate it. If you want to support my channel, you can join. The link's in the description on how to do so. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to get in the comments there. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.